Good afternoon, everyone. Wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for all being here. It's uh, my pleasure to be here with you and spend about an hour together. We've got some exciting things to share. We're going to be talking about the new Piano Adventures exams, which I'll share the different insights on that, a little different spin on the exams. We focus on the student examining, not just being examined. And I want to begin also with a warm greeting from Nancy. You know, it doesn't seem like it was too many years ago I come on stage and I say, Nancy says hello, she's home taking care of Vivian, our daughter. And then with the pandemic and everything, suddenly Vivian's grown up and now Nancy's staying back to take care of my 96 year old mother. So it's, a, it's sweet, but she's gonna be very much represented here, as you know, because she's been uh, really leading the exam project and very active and working very hard. So I know you appreciate it, we appreciate it, and she gives a warm hello. I thought we'd start out today before we dive in to publications, both the exams and in your pack, you'll find uh, some new adult publications that we'll share as well. But I wanted to look at, after all of this change that we've been through and kind of going through with oh, business technology, everything seems to be in a shift, right? What's the stable points? What are the factors for teaching and learning that really make all the difference? If you kind of think of a systems hat on it, what's, what are the systems that allow the teaching and learning to engage and to produce that kind of a virtuous circle of feedback loops for success? Three factors come to mind. We've got, of course, the student and teacher. They're right at the core, and then music is like our objective. We're, we're dealing with music, we're focusing on music. So music, the student and the teacher, give us three factors to evaluate. But what gets exciting is if we look at between these, we take any two of the factors and between them is the dynamic, there's a relationship. So let's look at these various relationships, beginning with this one right here, because that's you, the teacher, and your relationship with music. That's an anchor point, if you will. You've got your whole history, experience of how you learn music, how you're engaging with music now, your favorite styles of music, your teachers. There's a whole package of, a, of viewpoints on music and the world and its role. And that's enveloped in that relationship between you and music, including your love of music. And this is an anchoring foundation. Now let's shift then to this parallel relationship here on this side is the student's relationship with music. Well, depending on the age, that can be nearly empty or there's something with songs they love or don't love, but it's a different world, right? But here's what I'd like to suggest is that in our relationship with music, that models to the student their relationship with music. I like the word resonance. I've just been playing with that word a lot these days. The, your relationship with music can resonate then to the student, right? They resonate with yours. You're that model. So what you do, not only with a love of music, which would be great if that transfers nicely, but your curiosity about music, your discovery, your willingness to dig in and examine the details of music. So how you approach it, how you approach it in learning and performance and expression, all resonates, it mirrors in the student. And this is a, all nonverbal, isn't it? Certainly we can package it in verbal as well, but don't overlook the power of that nonverbal aspect of that resonance. Our goal really is developing that student's relationship with music, both their love and their abilities. So it's a full package there that we're looking for. So how do we make this resonance occur? Well, that comes to a great degree via the student-teacher relationship. There's some interesting neuroscience side of it about how much we will mimic and mirror other things depending on the trust of that relationship. It's amazing the imitation. There's some research that even motor skills, if you see a movement, if you have full trust of that other person's movement, it bypasses all the thinking and that visual mirroring of that movement goes directly to the motor cortex and imitates. But if you don't trust the individual, it doesn't resonate, it doesn't imitate. Isn't that interesting? So I think it tells us that this relationship is all powerful in helping the other resonate. So you can see how these are foundational, foundational principles in a very big degree. 
You can see how it could go awry. If it's too dominant on the teacher and subordinate on the student, then what happens? In other words, all about the teacher, then it's the teacher's ownership of the lesson, not the student's ownership. And what's going to happen? The student will have less affinity and walk away, right? So we need to make sure this is balanced. And I think one of the best ways to look at that is that the student is the hero on their journey and you are the guide, right? We as teachers are the coach, the guide. But it has to be about the student. It's the student being heroic. It's not us being heroic. It's not to call attention to us. It's not to show how good we are. Or sometimes the implicit message can be, I'm really good and you're not gonna be quite as good as me, but we'll do the best we can, right? <laughs> That's the kind of unspoken thing that can be there and resonate. So we have to be very cautious of that. We attend to the student and we make the student the hero. And when we do that, then things start to really gel. The motivation comes in. In a way, these dynamics undergird even standard motivational theory. We've talked over the years about aspects of motivation. But fundamentally, if the student's relationship with music is escalating, you've got the intrinsic motivation right there. And that's going to activate all of the other elements of motivation. On this line here, I'm wondering if you would for me, Put an arrowhead on the left side, so going from teacher to the student. What if we had that one-way communication? We're just pushing here towards the student, right? We're feeding the student information. Imagine how that student's going to feel. It's like building a relationship on a one-way ticket, right? A one-way street. What we need for real teaching and learning is that we need that teaching information to take a round-trip ticket goes from us to the student, we have to see it coming back at us. In other words, it has to be the assessment of does the student learn what we're saying? And the student initiates a question or query, it comes back to the teacher, and it gets back to the student. It's all round trip. So think of this as equalizing teacher and student, where you're the guide and the student is the hero. The music, especially with curriculum and music, what we try to do is we're just providing tools, right? So we provide you the path on the hero's journey. So you have a map. So we're mapping and giving you these tools. If we look at this concept then of information flowing round, round trip, then we see that element of examination in two ways. Our modeling of dealing with music, we show that we dig deep, right? That tick-tock, quick little fix of, of dopamine, right? But we're training the student to dig deep, go into detail. Our discovery questions take the student into the score, find the patterns. So we model that examination. So we might say that in addition to examining the student on that feedback loop of what do they know, we're also helping the student learn to be examiners of their knowledge because then they can reflect what do they know, what do they not know. So with their Piano Adventures exams, we like to have the student show what they know, show what they know. Because when we do that, we help the student, we're teaching such that the student feels smart. And remember again, if the student's gonna be the hero, they have to feel smart. So show what you know. When they show what they know, then we give them that acknowledgement, the celebration, well done. And that creates a little feedback loop and then they're ready to take on a bigger challenge and a bigger challenge. So we get these markers. So our Piano Adventures exam then is just a tool, another tool in your tool kit that you can use for students to give that sense of, yes, you did it, right? I like to think of this as we're sharing with a student that you can do it, because they're not always sure about that big task you had, right? We say you can do it, then they get the belief, they resonate, mirror that, okay, I can do it, then they work hard, and then they show what they know, and then that consolidates the fact that, yes, I can do it. And if you can do it, well, then you can do the next one. And as everyone knows, we have a nice, smooth ramp right on up, but when you move from 2B into 3A, 3B, obviously, to get the skills we're after, there has to be more dedication, more examination, more hard work, and more leaps of faith. But that's where we fill that in. We believe, yes, you can do it. Student mirrors, I can do it. Then demonstrates that they can do it. So those are the feedback loops. And when we get all those dynamics running smoothly, then the lessons are a joy and the student continues to progress with strong motivation. 
Well, let's dig in a little bit into the examinations. I can share one little thing here. This is kind of shows that we're foundational with that triangle, right? It's relationships based. It's kind of the basis of what happens. What do you think might be at the pinnacle if we turn that pyramid into a, tri a, a prism here? Are we turning our triangle into a pyramid, if you will? That's the practice. Because remember we said that everything's going well and you get this virtual, virtuous feedback loops. Well, here we have it because every one of those relationships when they're flourishing produces more practice. And with more practice, we got the mechanical generation of uh, increased skill. So Piano Adventures exams, the language of theory, we have a theory exam and the artistry of performance. We have a performance exam, so it's a two part. You can do one or the other or both. And the mission of the exams is to provide an engaging musical experience. I'm gonna stop on that in a minute. When we looked at that student-teacher relationship, we said, well, how do I develop that? Do I have to doubt, uh, dote on the student, you know, or do anything special? Well, really, all you need to do is work side by side with that student. So when you take the exam, it's a project that you're doing together and that engages the student and then activates that student-teacher relationship and improves that teacher-student relationship. So it's an engaging musical experience for students to examine what they know and celebrate achievement. And then as always, this is the mission of Piano Adventures is to develop musical minds and hearts, meaning both hemispheres, right, and the heartfelt expression. The analysis, creativity, and expression are ACE learning theory. We're changing the lives of the students by helping them think in, in more discipline, more detail, but also more relational, more expressive, and more subtle and soulful ways of thought. Okay, our exams, and I'd like to introduce our exam team. This is Teresa and, uh, and uh, Adam Zander, and both very uh, big uh, players and leaders on our exam team. So at this point, I'd like to turn the stage over to Teresa. Thanks, Randy. I feel like there's been so much buzz about this Piano Adventures exam, like I'm doing a world premiere of a movie or something. Um, but I'm gonna just go through and show you and do a walkthrough of the exams. Um, we divided it into five sections just because there's kind of a lot to go through. So first, I'm gonna be talking about the exam overview. A lot of you, I'm sure, use the Piano Adventures books. And the idea is that as you're getting towards the end of a book, let's say primer lesson book, um, we started hearing feedback about how nice it would be to have some sort of official assessment for teachers so that the, the students can feel like they can really show what they know. The teachers can feel like, yes, the student is ready to move on to the next level. And also the parents, you know, showing them that, yes, we're actually teaching your children. They're learning something. And also so they can get some sort of official accreditation that their, ch their child is ready to go on to the next level. So that's why the Piano Ventures exams were created. Um, in overall, there are two areas of the exam, the theory exam and the performance exam. The theory exam is an online assessment. It can be taken anytime the student is ready. And in the performance exam, there's two testing sessions a year, and it's a video submission process. So I'm going to go over that in just a bit. I'm first going to start with an exam overview and a purpose, and then I'm going to dive into the exciting theory exams. Um, for the theory exams, I'm going to actually tour you through an actual sample exam so you can see what it looks like. And when you take a look at it, you'll see why it's really different than any other exams that are out there. And then the adventurous performance exams. I'm going to show you um, how you can submit videos and then what it looks like when they're evaluated by the Piano Adventures exam coaches. And then my colleague, Autumn, she's going to come up and talk about model performance videos. So this is actually a support tool and a prep area for exams, but it's an entire new product in itself. So I'm really excited to show you that, where we have model performance videos of every single piece that is in the repertoire for the exams. And then lastly, I'll show you some brief steps on how to get started. So let's start off with an exam overview. And this is kind of the mission that Randy was talking about, but you may have seen what is printed at the bottom of all of our books, developing musical minds and hearts. And that's really at the core of what Piano Ventures does and is about and what all of our products and services are about, to develop a student's musical mind and heart and to be a unique music maker. 
So imagine a student taking one of their pieces in their lesson book, let's say, and really diving in and, and examining what's really in the music. So more than just learning it, but actually examining and analyzing the music and seeing what's in there. And if you just take that keyhole reference for a little bit, the more they look into their music, the bigger that keyhole expands, and it just helps them develop more of their musical mind and soars higher. And that's what the Piano Ventures exams are about. They lead students to be bright examiners in language of theory and the artistry of performance. So we're really taking this word exam, kind of turning it over on its head and saying it's now the student who is the examiner and they're also taking an exam. All right, so I'm going to show you a little bit about the theory exam. So like I mentioned, they're online and on-demand exams. So either the student um, or their parent or the teacher can enroll in an exam, and it's all done online. It supports all the concepts in the Piano Adventures levels. So if you're a Piano Adventures teacher, it just naturally sinks in to what you're already teaching in the, the theory and lesson books. And something about the exam is that it's really fun. So one thing we heard about exams is sometimes they're a little boring or maybe a little intimidating, especially for young children, if they're five or six in the primer level and they don't really want that traditional exam experience, this is a great way to get their feet wet, get involved in a very friendly exam experience. Um, and we use this exam mascot trophy and who's gonna be animated throughout the exam. Actually, if you look in your showcase packs, if you dig all the way to the bottom of your packs, you'll see a little um, pin of trophy. So this is just a fun thing that we have that we're all wearing here. You can use these as like a reward for students when they finish their exam, or you can just wear it yourself. Um, and you'll see him throughout the exam, which I'll show you in just a bit. And right now, we have just released this product. It is now available for the primer level, and it is going to have additional levels coming soon. Level one will be coming out this fall, and then it's going to go all the way up to level five. Okay, so I'm going to show you what the exam actually looks like, and let's actually try it out. I'm really excited to show you, because once you see it, you'll see how different it really is. Um, you notice when I start, this is just a sound check, but when I start that um, there's one question per page. It's very colorful. It's meant to be for children. Also, um, there's an optional um, narration, which is an audio. So if the student isn't quite ready to know how to read yet or they're still learning how to read, it can go as young as five years old that is taking this exam. So we should actually check the sound in this room as well. So let me actually just play this. Welcome, adventurer. Let's do a quick sound check. If you can hear this melody, choose the blue next bar. One. All right, so that worked. Okay, so here's our question one. These are just five sample questions for you guys to look at. You can see we've used these fun shapes to just have the student be able to see something that's visually interesting and appealing. And the shapes actually pop out as you toggle through them. So continue. Music symbols. Look closely. Which double bar line is correct? All right. And then when I click next, once I select my answer and click next, just pay attention to what happens at the bottom right of the screen. You'll see something fun there. So that's our little mascot trophy. And he's there on every question. He's meant to guide the student through the questions. Even if they answer it right or wrong, it doesn't matter, he's always happy. But he's there just to keep the student going. And then the scores come out at the end of the exam. So obviously a student taking it, they think they're getting all the questions right. So trophy is there to just push them along and keep going. Okay, here's question two. Key names. Which keyboard spells the word Cab. C. A. B. Okay, and then in the top left, that's where you control the narration. So if it's an older student or you, someone just doesn't want the narration, you can turn that off. You can also replay it. But it's very helpful for students when we tested it with students that are like a little on the younger side. It just helps them, you know, they may not know the word keyboard, symbol, if they're in kindergarten. So it just helps them with the narration there. Two. Key names. Which keyboard spells the word cab? C 
A, B. All right, there's trophy. Okay, three. number three. Rhythm. How many half notes do you see? Choose the correct box. All right, three or four half notes. And Michael Jackson trophy. Four. <laughs> Reading. Which bass staff shows only skips? And here you'll see some of the art tied in with the Piano Ventures books into the cave here. Five. Ear training. How many notes do you hear? One, two, three, four, or five? Choose the correct number. And then I can listen again. Congratulations! And it ends with Trophy and his friends congratulating the student. And on the actual exam, this becomes a whole cartoon animation. It's like, you're done! And they start dancing and the, the cat starts pawing. It's really, really cute. Yes, Trophy does it all the way through. It's 70 questions for the actual exam. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes for a student to take it. Um, and it's up to the student to find out what poses he does because it changes all the time. Once the exam is finished, Welcome, adventure. a few fun things happen. Um, I'm going to talk about the Bravo board in just a moment. First, they get a certificate of completion. The certificate is actually signed by Nancy and Randall Faber. It has their name on it. Um, so it feels like an official thing that they've moved on to the next level and they're ready. And then this is a really special area. It's the Bravo board on our website. It's where we're going to be featuring high achieving students. So students who score 97% or higher on the theory exam get to be featured on our Bravo board and they can feel like they're famous. But we get a call out for the student, their first and last initial location, and then Trophy will say something like, looks like great examining to me, Kaisen. Keep up the good work. We hope we can fill this Bravo board with many, many students from around the world, around the country, and they can share it with their families and friends and, sh and show that they're published on the Piano Ventures website. Okay, I'm gonna go into the performance exam now. And as students approach the end of their lesson books, they can start practicing for the Piano Ventures performance exam so that by the time they reach the end of the level, they can submit their video recordings for the three pieces. It includes a partnership between student and teacher. So we didn't want to leave the teacher out of this situation. So it's a music partnership where the student and parent upload the video. And there's actually a process for the teacher to review the videos, make sure that they're ready, and approve them before they're sent to a Piano Adventures exam coach. It's three videos that need to be submitted. The repertoire includes a list one lively piece, a list two slower piece, and then a list three students choice piece. There's over 130 pieces that can be used. It's all tied into the Piano Ventures core method as well as the pre-time to big time series. So as long as you're using Piano Ventures, it just ties right into there. And students can use the pieces from early as Old MacDonald had a song. So it's you know pre-reading. So it's meant to be for students that are just beginning. Our exam coaches are trained so that they can give warm and encouraging comments because they know, you know, it may not sound like a concert pianist, but they're beginning, they're learning how to play. And so it's meant to be for those young students and getting feedback for them. There's two testing sessions per year, a fall session and a spring session. And enrollment is actually open now for the next fall session. All right, what pieces can you use for the exam? I'll show you the repertoire list in just a moment, but this is a fun little preview of that model performance video area. All of the pieces in the repertoire list have a model performance video that a student can watch. It includes a demonstration of someone actually playing the piece along with the lyrics. It also has duet recording so they can listen to the duet, how that would sound like. And it has little fun exercises like watch your music as you listen and hear for this. So this is a little preview of that. And in terms of the repertoire list, this is available on our website, exams.pianoventures.com. It has the Primer repertoire list. Actually, in your books as well, you will see something that looks like this. It's the exam welcome booklet. So in here, this talks all about the exams. And at the end of this book, you'll also see the repertoire list listed there. 
And I'll just flip through real quickly what it looks like. The list one pieces, there's 15 pieces there from the, uh, what we're calling our core four books, the Primer Lesson Book, Performance Book, Technique and Artistry, Gold Star Performance. And then list two are the slower pieces, so some of the same four books, 15 pieces. And it's all listed in the back of that, of that blue welcome book. So if you want to take a look there, you can view it a little bit bigger. And the list three is the student's choice. So you can choose from these pre-time books. We have classics, Christmas, favorites, hymns, jazz and blues, music from China, and rock and roll. So there's a lot of repertoire you can use. And it's all from the very beginning that they can start using this. And a thing to note about our list three pieces is you can actually submit the video as a duet. So if you as a teacher would like to play with the student as a duet, um, you can actually submit that as part of your recording because duets have a really long, rich history at Piano Adventures. I'm sure you guys have used the duets that Nancy has composed and they're fantastic. And we would like to encourage you to do that with your students with the exams. It can also be a duet with like an older sibling or a family member as long as it's a musical performance. All right, so how do you do the performance exam? Uh, this, the exam platform, once you take a look at it, it's very user friendly, just guides you through. Um, the student or parent can upload their video through the platform and then you'll see here whatever piece they choose, we also have a little description to help them with the piece. And then at the bottom you'll see this button, submit for teacher approval. So this is where you come in after the student or parent uploads the video. You as a teacher can review the video, make sure it's ready. If you have any comments such as, you know, please change the camera angle or work on this area of the piece, you can actually type that as a comment in the platform, which will go to the student and parent. And then once you approve it, that's when it goes to the Piano Ventures exam coach. So I'm going to show you a results page of what it looks like when a student gets their performance results back. So in this case, this student chose three pieces, Donkeys Love Carrots from the Gold Star Performance, Bells of Great Britain from the Primer Lesson Book, and then Ping Pong Song from our Music from China series. You could see there's a comment here from an overall exam comment from the exam coach. And at the bottom left, that's pretty fun. We have some music pseudonyms for our evaluators. This one's Coach Prelude. Um, they all have fun names. They're real people, but we have like Coach Allegro, Coach Trill, Coach Legato, just to also kind of add that fun element for the students. And then you can see from list two, there's this ribbon that says nominated for the Bravo board. So I'm going to show you what that looks like too, but you can also get these videos published on our website as well. If I just click into Bells of Great Britain, list two, you could see what it looks like. So this student, Paula, uploaded her piece, and the exam coach evaluated her in these areas, notes, rhythm, dynamics, presence, which is like posture and poise, and technique. And she got all excellent ratings. We have three ratings for each. It's excellent, very good, or developing. And then you'll see a coach's comments. And the coaches are trained, like I mentioned before, to give very warm, encouraging comments to help with early student development, but also just motivating them to continue. And then on the right, you'll see here, the parent can actually toggle this on to add them to the Bravo board. So the parent has to give permission, obviously, in order to get their child's video published on our website. So that's where they toggle it on. And then there's some disclosures there. But um, once a parent gives permission, then this video can actually go up and be published on the Bravo board. Here is an example of that certificate. Actually, this one's the diploma. So the diploma actually comes when a student passes both the theory and the performance exam. So this is an example of the diploma. And you could see that you can earn special badges depending on your combined score. It's like an honors distinction. We have the All-Star Adventure Award. We have the Achieving Adventure Award, as well as um, the Amazing Adventure Award. So just different point categories can earn you different badges. Again, signed by Nancy and Randall Faber here. And then this coach was Coach Glissando, who evaluated this one. All right, and then the Bravo Board. So the performance um, students who, perf who get at least an excellent rating in, uh, on one piece in all five categories can go onto our Bravo Board. We call them the, our performance champs. And they get featured also on our uh, public area of our website. Um, and this is also an area where they can share with their family and friends and say that they're officially on there and they're famous again, but now with their video. So that's a really fun area and we hope that this can also be filled up with a lot of different students from around the world.
Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Autumn and she's going to go over that model performance video area of the exam website. So when we think about preparation for exams and exploration, they go hand in hand with our model performance videos. Students and teachers can choose from over 130 pieces from the primer level method books and select books from the pre-time piano series. As Teresa mentioned, uh, we've got a great exam website and there's a wonderful feature on here that is such a great resource. It's a comprehensive piece selector. So together, teachers and students can easily browse all of the pieces available for the list one, list two, and list three pieces. They can easily browse by book or type in by piece title. And once you've selected your piece, you'll be amazed at what you can find. Let's take an example with I Found a Penny from the Primer Level Gold Star Performance Book. You'll notice that uh, the book and the page information is present, and there's also a lovely description of the piece at the very bottom. And for those of you in the very back rows, I'd like to read it so you can hear. This melody begins with a cheerful rhythm as a penny is found on the sidewalk. But get ready for a big retardando as a second penny is found. A fermata gives time to examine the shiny treasure and the piece closes with a forte fifth. These pleasant summaries provide a nice overview of the character, the musical elements, and the selected ideas that are featured throughout the piece. Teachers may either view the solo performance or the video. And let's just take a moment to toggle between those. When we look at the solo video, you'll notice that Trophy, our exam mascot, is ready for adventure. And as soon as I clicked that, you'll see him playfully jump through the keyhole for this new adventure, and we'll have a model performance. Included in each of the model performances are the lyrics. It's a fun way for students to follow along in the music or if they choose, uh, sing along with the performance. When we look at the duet portion, we've got some fun ideas happening here. The duet slides feature opportunities for active listening. Each play duet slide includes a duet performance by Nancy and Randall Faber, along with a featured concept or listening exercise. Students are encouraged to follow along in their music and actively listen for the specific skill or concept. In I Found a Penny, students are asked to raise their hand when they hear the retardando happening in the performance. Not only are the students developing their critical listening skills, but it's an excellent opportunity for them to hear how their um, solo part fits along with the teacher duet. These model performance videos are a wonderful resource for teachers exploring the vast variety of the Piano Adventures library for primer students, and they make a, a great learning tool in the lesson as well. So part of becoming bright examiners is allowing students to show what they know. And as we start to think about theory preparation, the primer level unit assessments are a great resource in helping students become bright examiners. It's uh, helpful to think that there's no more guessing when we start to uh, see how students are learning because we can have these mini check-ins at the unit level to make sure that students are feeling confident and comfortable with these concepts. I like to think of them as these little check-ins to help smooth out any bumps in the learning process and we can make sure that our students are feeling confident with the skills that they're exploring. And each unit assessment highlights concepts such as rhythm patterns, um, uh, note reading, and other musical terms that they're encountering at each unit in the primer level series. 
The unit assessments, um, you can either uh, see the print version or access it online on the teacher atlas. They take about 10 minutes. They can be used in individual lessons, group lessons, online, in person, and they're a fantastic way to help students prepare for the theory exam. Okay, I'm just gonna show you briefly, if you're interested in the exams, how to get started. Um, first, just take a look at the exam welcome booklet. This tells you everything you need to know about the exams. It has the repertoire list in there, explains in detail how all the exams work. And then if you go to our website, exams.pianoventures.com, that actually has more information. It has the link to all the model performance videos. You don't need to log in. It's all on there in the public website. You can view the Bravo board too. And you can also enroll there. And then if you're interested, we're doing a deep dive webinar. Randy and team are doing Introduction to Piano Ventures exams. You can either scan the QR code here to register, or there's a postcard in your, um, in your tote bags. And on the back right here, there's a QR code to the exam registration. It's on April 23rd at 1 Eastern. So we hope you'll join us for the exams. We hope you'll see your students on the Bravo board. And if you have any questions, feel free to come to our booth. Um, Randy's gonna go over more on the adult student repertoire, but we, we, lo we would love to give you a tour at our booth. You can walk up to our stations, try it yourself. Um, just play with it and see how it all works. And you can also stop by to get your coupon. So thank you so much. And I'm gonna turn it over to Randy, who's gonna be talking about adult learner repertoire. Thank you so much, Teresa. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. You've got quite a lot in your pack. You want to dig through your pack a little bit? We, we, this is a freebie set for you. We thought, hey, we're doing the primer exam. Let's give you a bunch of primer materials here, okay? So you've got everything from the primer site reading book to uh, some of the pre-time to big time. So I hope you enjoy. Um, I thought we'd right now is look at a few things, a little shift gears, but to the adult. Uh, you know, just a little little reflection. When we were talking about student, teacher, and music, you know, we think right away of our seven-year-olds, our kids and all, but what about with the adult learner? It's kind of interesting to reflect on that, I think, because in this day and age, you're gonna find adult learners just going to YouTube. But what, where's the system on that? Where's the dynamic? You almost have none of those factors. Maybe they find a song they like, but then they don't know how to play it. So then maybe they find a little tidbit of information or a video and they copy the video, but then they don't know what's next. And there's no guide to walk them through. So you can see the systems theory of it fails. But if that adult learner has the guide and has the curriculum, then we've got that triangle of relationships that kick in. And I think that's how success uh, maintains. It can keep flowing forward. Well, uh, adult, Piano literature, we call it adult uh, piano adventures, it's literature for the piano. And you're familiar with our Developing Artist Literature series, right, preparatory, oh, and all of them went through four, and then the Sonatina books as well. So that's good literature, but we wanted to do something that ties in a little more concretely with the adult piano adventures method books one and two. So this is book one, and the first thing you'll notice if you open it up, that the size of the score is much bigger. <laughs> And I really appreciate that myself. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, it's, it's helpful for the adults, obviously. So of course you're gonna find some repeats or some really good essential repertoire that we have in developing ours, but we took a lot of time to put new pieces in here that you may not have seen uh, that we feel are effective for the adult. If you open up to the uh, table of contents uh, right at the start there, uh, you'll see that there's these sections just as in our adult popular series, classic series, and we'll touch on Disney series um, and Christmas, the sections are, are per concept, right? So we open up with five finger position pieces, and then we move into the full scale, steep scales pieces, then we have relative minor, the A minor pieces, and then G major pieces. And we go to book two, we can similarly uh, catch them by some harmonic um, contents, context. If we go to, um, Opening pages here, this is a little page that introduces section one, and it's pretty perfunctory, but um, you know, for the adult, it's still very helpful. So we have five finger scales, quite obviously, but if we look at number two, I'm gonna do a close up. I really think that for many students that 
uh, adults in particular, the contrary motion is such a wonderful way to find your coordination. Because then you get the symmetry of the thumb to five moving out and in. And if we're going to do any kind of circular motions and so on, even a drop of arm weight, everything is mirror images and symmetrical. So I, more and more I have students sometimes playing scales, right hand up and down, and then left hand down and up. So just reverse it. So we get that sense of symmetry. And I even often use it in my own playing. If there's something that, some technical gesture, try it with the right hand and then move it with the left hand. In other words, you can kind of see how you can mirror image something out. Because that mirroring is, we don't think of it that way, but our bodies are mirrored out this way. Everything from how the cortex is, is established and for sensory and motor, and then also how the arms are imitative. Our fingers are on the outside. We don't have thumbs on one side, right? But we play piano as if our thumbs are, and fifth fingers are reversed on one page. So this sort of thing is really helpful for the adults. So I've noticed the symmetry between the hands, and it gets a very natural sense of the circular motions. Going to uh, this next page here, uh, just a little close up, this gives us some sense of you know, block chord playing and broken chord playing, and right at the beginning here, just highlighting tonic and dominant relationships. So sometimes you may be very at five and one. And with the adult, remember the adults can often play octaves. So often we'll, we'll just put in the octave substitute. Whenever they want to play an octave instead, that's fine. So you could play this whole concept of any tonic and dominant. Listen, understanding those relationships of one and five. Because through so many of the pieces now that follow, here I'm just jumping a little ahead to page eight, but notice the tonic and dominant relationships because we can build up from our tonic and we can also, our t and then we can also build up from the dominant, right? So we get this whole, whole keyboard construction with the one and five sevens, and we'll have them map that out through these pieces. And if we take some of the other pieces, like, uh, you know, a little waltz for four hands coming up here, we get this, uh, you know, good sense of five finger playing here, because that's that area that we're in. But just uh, going into in your book, if you go to the next page, page 14, the five note sonatina, we all know this one, right? And, so that's, this is just all one chord, and then five and one. This whole section, maybe put in octaves. This is all five. And then we get our leading tone, and then of course we get basically a cadenza here, right? This is just an order. And maybe the student does, you're very fancy. Or maybe not, but. And back to one. This is all one, right? Five, seven, back to one. And so forth. So do take that sense of mapping in the key of C and G as you go through the book. I'm going to move on here. Let's turn the stage to Autumn. And because you'll notice QR codes on every page, and we're including yeah. some video support, which is great for the adult because they need that hand-holding at home. Great. So just picking off of, of what Randy was saying, you know, adults are such a joy to teach. They come to us with such a rich life experience and they're excited to learn at this new stage of life. And oftentimes in between our weekly or bi-weekly lessons with them, they need that little extra element of support. And you'll notice that at the bottom of each page, we have QR code support for our students. And the bottom left corner includes uh, tutorial support as well as a bottom right corner uh, model video. But I'd like to just take a moment to look at the types of support that we might want to include for our students. Perhaps it's a touch of music history or little tidbits of music theory or reminders about technique. So let's see one of these tutorials in action and it's Ferdinand Baer's Waltz and G, a piece that's clearly in a five finger pattern and explores a variety of eighth note rhythms. Thank you for joining me again. 
waltz in G on page 31 might remind you of the earlier waltz for four hands on page 11. Two different composers, but the pieces have much in common. Each is in 3-4, both being waltzes, of course, and the melody is played with both hands in unison. One striking feature about this waltz is the rhythmic motive that is used without fail in section 1, two eighth notes to a half note. Play a waltz, 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 play a waltz dominant tonic. So as Randy was sharing, um, this book is divided into various sections. We just explored something in a five-finger pattern. And now as we move on into the next section with C major, you'll see that there's a d equal attention to the development of the technical skills as well as the theory skills throughout our scales and chord progressions. So one comment I get from many adults is, how is this theory related to what I'm playing? Or how is this technique related to what I'm playing? And this gem of a piece by Cornelius Gurlitt showcases the C major scale in the left hand. You can see in measures one through eight, each note of the descending C major scale. It's a lovely tie-in. And I'd like to tie in the tutorial with this as well, highlighting elements of music history. Greetings to you. Cornelius Gurlitt, or as his friends might have called him, Corny Gurlitt, was from the Romantic period, around 1830 to 1910. Romantic piano music will use more pedal and more accidentals. Remember, accidentals are sharps and flats not included in the key signature. Since this prelude is in C major, any sharp, flat, or natural would be an accidental. So these tutorials provide just enough of a tidbit to help adult learners continue on the path without overwhelming them and providing the learning stages that they need. And Randy, perhaps I'll turn it back over to you to um, continue on with um, the session as we're uh, exploring right at the end of the time here. Great, thank you so much, Adam. Here we go. How about a little Disney to close off today? We've got the, you've seen the Disney book one, and maybe some of you have seen the Disney book two, but we're sharing that today. So what we just did with the literature, that was at the book one level. So we're moving up now to the book two level. level. And just a couple little comments before we close. You know, adults sometimes don't have the coordination or the, the practice wherewithal to take things at a fast tempo or even up to tempo. So what's wonderful is when we have a piece that can really be expressively played slowly, because there's, between the rubato and slow tempo, you can get away with murder on this, and you can still make it weep, you know? So this is kind of a fun one that we said, let me just play a little bit as an example. Maybe you did, maybe we just do little variations. Student will love it. Highlighting a little bit like my ending. What is that? That's, that's our triad or an F major, but I just added the six to it. Because if we add that six or the second, we get our pentatonic scale. And now we get this nice little ending piece. The student feels like a virtuoso there. Let's pull it right into one more piece and before we close, just around the river bend in C, then we get the C, D, E, right, and the A and the G, and that's our pentatonic scale. So we have that as a beautiful kind of a folk sound. And this piece, notice the melody. 
that's all pentatonic is. And then on the four, still the same tones. And the little interlude. Leading up there, Ben. That's still pentatonic scale, even though we're over the four chord. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Whether we're on the one or the four or the five or the six, same pentatonic scale. Don't feel, sometimes people ask, well, do I have to change my scales every time there's another chord? You're in the key, that's your scale. It's like major key, same scale rides through your one, two, five, seven. Same with the pentatonic. You can stay on that C pentatonic over the four, over the five, and we heard that time and time again in this piece. Makes it very easy for your students to pick it up and gives you some tools to play with as well. Hey, it's been great seeing you all. I think we have time for a few questions. Do we have time yet? Two three minutes, okay. Questions on the exams, questions on Piano Adventures curriculum, treat your atlas, yes. So when you're enrolled, is there an enrollment fee? Or There's a fee, it's uh, $20 for the theory, and that is a, uh, it's all online. So it's all ad lib at demand. You can just sign up whenever you want and execute that. The performance, we have coaches, so we need to give feedback. So we have pretty long periods that we open it up in the both spring and uh, fall and spring. And that, so what's our price on the performance exam? $50 for the performance because we have to pay, pay the judges. Sound good? Yeah. Only a teacher can enroll the student? Yeah, the teacher can enroll, but because of the rules, there's federal regulations about posting videos and all. So we comply very tightly to that, that it has to have parent permission. So the process is kind of complicated, but it's all embedded in the, in the experience here that you can enroll your student and then it goes to the teacher, or the parent for the approval and they click it back. And once it's approved, then you can move forward with submission. But you can't submit without a parent approval, guardian approval. Yeah, and I just want to add to that. If you want to try out the exam, you can enroll as a teacher and also put your same email as a student if you wanted to try it. And it'll still work. You can just try it out. So you, it, it'll say student name, student email. But if you want to try it, you can just put your same email for both teacher and student, and it'll work. Thanks. Good. Uh, right in the back there with the blue. We'll, in this, uh, will teachers be able to have accounts and then be able to have their students' progress saved as a legacy? document over time so you have a studio and this is the uh, yeah legacy history. document so really I think I've got your question that does this can this be a legacy document for parent or studio we take it off the Bravo board in one year because we just want to keep privacy policies in place but we do have an opportunity period during that time for you to be able to keep the video archive it so the teacher can archive it with this uh, parents permission and of course the student gets the copy so you bring up a really wonderful idea this becomes a portfolio doesn't it and if, when you know and, and anything like photo taking or videoing you kind of forget about it in the moment but some years later you wish you had that so this is a wonderful way to build that kind of a portfolio of, pro of progress yeah um, is there a time limit where the students can upload their videos yeah the uh, there's a time period uh, so there's just like the enroll, you can enroll and you've got a certain time period of over those weeks to be able to submit it. So it's not a, it's not a crushing uh, deadline. Any comments on that, Teresa? On the back of the exam welcome booklet, they can have the dates. Okay, you'll see some dates on the back of the exam booklet and that gives you an idea. But you can 
you can register well in advance so that you're lined up, you're set, and then you have time to find what repertoire you want, you can explore, then you commit to the repertoire once you, uh, uh, you get formally into the submissions. Any one more question before we go? All right, hey, it's been, yeah. Would this be a platform for learning challenged kids at all? I think it would because it's, especially at the elementary levels, right? It's hand-holding. We've done a lot of testing with it and we've been actually surprised that kids on that theory exam, they want to follow that trophy. They're just in there and it's like, it, it's an event that they're engaged and they're primed and ready for it. This is my hope, I can't guarantee this, but I would hope that if we have these successful experiences with the kids young under that, what would normally be pressure, instead show what you know is an opportunity. If, if some of you are school teachers, some kids relish the exam experience. All right, I'm really gonna show what I know, right? And you get the little, just enough adrenaline surge and you're kind of in your peak performance mode and now there's collapse under the anxiety. Well, those are trained responses. So if early in life here, we can get them these peak performance mode, great, I'm ready to show what I know, they can transfer that then into the school exams as well. And they understand what's the difference? Are you prepared or not, right? If you're super prepared, Radko and I were talking over a, a dinner last night. What was your word? You're like triply safe, right? You anchor your harmony, you know, your harmony inside out. You've got a tactile memory that you don't depend on, but it's there. And you've got your oral memory and you get triple duty because you're practiced and prepared. Then there's no need for the anxiety. And uh, if the students are learning preparation, gives me that success, transfers to school also, prepare, and then that exam is anxious, anxiety producing. A lot has to do with mindsets. And this is one of the roles as we talked in that earlier part of our session today, right? We're influencing the child's mindset. We're, they're not practicing just physical patterns at the piano, but they're practicing life orientations and mental mindsets. And if we, we optimize those, then we optimize the student's capacity to deal with life. Okay, great to see you. I'll be going right down to the booth and hope to see you there if you have more questions. Thanks so much. Thank you, Thank you all.